minutes trying to record a vlog that just kept rolling back on itself so I'm gonna type that out into a blog post link will be in the info box as always uh, so instead I'm gonna do a book haul for you guys um, I have quite a few books to share with you uh, firstly is the Shades of Grace trilogy by E.L. James. Um, I still have to read Fifty Shades Freed, um, but I was distracted by something else, which I'll show you later. I would highly recommend these books. They're fairly adult, as I have said before, but they're, they're worth a look into. I got a couple of young adult books. I got Falling Under by Gwen Hayes. heard a lot about that one. I can't remember what it's supposed to be about but it was really intrigued me. I got The Moth Diaries by Rachel Klein which has been made into a movie and it has Lily Cole in it and anything Lily Cole is in I will watch. I love her. Um, so I thought I'd read the book. Um, and I got The Princess Bride um, by William Goldman. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this. It's supposed to be really, really funny. Um, what's it say? The Princess Bride, S. Morgenstein's classic tale of true love and high adventure. The good parts version abridged by William Goldman. So yeah. Oh, it's the same guy who wrote the screenplay for Princess Bride, so that, that explains that. I got a sci-fi book. This is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. This is the book that went on to be made into Blade Runner, and there's a few other books that follow on from this, I believe. Nick said he read a book that follows on to this. It was a lot thicker and it was actually called Blade Runner, but I don't know. If anyone knows, please let me know. You know. Yeah. I also got a couple of fantasy books. Um, I got The Left Hand of God by Paul Hoffman. I'd went to go buy... Um, is it Last Four Things? I think it's called our last four words um it's the follow-up to this book but i didn't know it was a follow-up until it said so so i decided to read left hand of god first and i got the um the name of the wind by patrick rothfuss and when i brought this to the tail the assistant i need to know this woman's name she is freaking gorgeous and has amazing taste in books and she's awesome but she got really excited when I was purchasing this so I'm, I'm guessing it's good if anyone's read it let me know I got Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier um, because this was mentioned in Fifty Shades Deeper so I decided to pick it up and see if I could understand the reference and it says in the bottom here not says jet Law. It says on the bottom here, not since Jane Eyre has a heroine faced such difficulty with the other woman. An international bestseller that has never gone out of print, Rebecca is the haunting love story of a young girl consumed by love and the struggle, struggle to find her identity. When was this released? Wow. She's pretty. Look at her. I'm guessing that Daphne de Moore. The Morier, maybe. Yes, it is. That is her. She died in 1989. Hmm. Copyright in 1938. Wow. Well, I 
wanted to pick this up for years so I'm glad I finally got around to it. So I went chart shopping again and I got this book. It's uh, called The Wilder Side of Life by Diane Stainforth and uh, it's set in the early 90s or late 80s. I think it's late 80s and it's about this woman who's a barrister and her husband is also a barrister and he's much older than she is and um, she has an unhappy life and then this rugged man comes into her life and he's connected to her shady past. Um, that's about all I can give away but I've been glued to this. Glued to this. So I went back to the charity shop and see if I could find any more of her books because her books are now out of print which is quite sad. I hate it when books go out of print but if you can find this in a charity shop um, I would definitely say pick it up. I got this one for 70p so it, for 70p I, I got a good deal, an amazing book for 70p. Um, but I found this one, this is Friends and Other Enemies and I'm not sure what this is about. It says, uh, charting the ebb and flow of female friendships and set against the background of international polo, transatlantic airlines, this is a powerful contemporary saga of a woman who's thrown down a challenge to life, to business and to the tough, unpredictable man who loves her. So yeah, got that. I got The Rag Nymph by Catherine Cookson and when I got this my mum was like, um, just to forewarn you, this is very different from the TV adaptation and I was a bit shocked uh, when she told me this. Because um, in the TV adaptation, you know, she's like 18 when she gets taken... Well, not to spoil things, but there is a brothel in this book and this girl gets abducted and taken to the brothel. In the TV adaptation, she is of age when this happens. And my mum told me in the book she is 13 when this happens, so I, I don't know if I'm really looking forward to this as I was. Um, so I don't know if I'm looking forward to this now as much as I was. I got Cross Stitch by Diana Gabaldon. Gabaldon? Yes, Gabaldon. Anna recommended this. She loves the entire series. Um, can't say I, I share her taste. I've read a couple of chapters and I'm like, eh. I'll give it another go when I have more time to sit and give it my attention. But for the moment, I'm not all that interested in it. It's set in... It start, the story starts in Inverness in like 1947 with this man and woman trying to this English man and woman trying to chase his family and it's like Scottish folklore and stuff it's weird um I got the first wives club by Olivia Goldsmith I loved the film when I was younger I didn't know it was a book I just kind of saw this and I was like hey Maybe I should read this. It reads a little bit like, um, what's her face? It's very reminiscent of Lauren Weisberger's writing style. So if you like that, you might like Olivia Goldsmith's I writing. I got Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides, Eugenides, the guy who wrote The Virgin Suicides. Uh, the Far From the Maddening Crowd by Thomas Hardy because I'm in the middle of reading um, Tess of the Durvilles and I really liked it, um, like it so far. So I figured I'd give this a go because it's one of his other really famous works of fiction. Yeah. And last second hand book I got was uh, Into the Garden by Virginia Andrews. I, I picked this up because um, the guy working there at the time was kind of like really pushy and 
like, uh, you know, can I help you find something kind of thing? And he wouldn't leave me alone until I picked something up and went and paid for it. So yeah, that's how I ended up with this. I just grabbed a Virginia Andrews book because they're books I wanted to read anyway, so. I don't know if it's part of a series or anything. Whatever. Now, don't judge me on this bit. Since I was getting into all the romances, I figured I might try and um, read some Mills and Boone. Yes, I'm an old lady who knits whilst reading Mills and Boone with her cats curled up at her feet. Um, I got Behind the Castello Doors by Chantelle Shaw. This is about a girl who turns up at his door with his baby in her arms. Ooh. Yeah. I got this one. It's one of the by requests. And it's uh, called The Mistresses. And it's three stories in one. Um, there's Make Believe Mistress. Six Month Mistress. And High Society Mistress. And uh, yeah, they sounded pretty intriguing. So I got that. I got some of the Rouge Regencies. I got The Wife Trap by uh, Tracy Ann Warren. And uh, it just says The Lady and the Scoundrel. After orchestrating a scandalous high society ruse, Lady Jeanette Brantford is banished from her family's estate in England and sent to live with boring elderly cousins in Irish countryside. But Jeanette's exile is surprisingly eventful. En route to her d dreaded destination, she encounters Dara O'Brien, a devilishly handsome architect who transforms Jeanette's punishment into a delicious whirlwind of wits, words, and undeniable passion. But Jeanette is determined to land herself a titled husband and no Irish commoner is going to make her change her mind. So yeah. How could I not pick I that up? Three Nights with a Scoundrel by Tessa Dare. Yes, her name is really Dare. And it says, Julian Bellamy is the ultimate scoundrel. The Ill illegitimate son of a nobleman. Julian may now be polished to perfection Enthralling the town, it says town, but I think it's meant to say town. Enthralling the town with wit and charm, but secretly he is plotting to ruin the lords, ravish the ladies, and have the last laugh on a society that once spurned him. However, Lily Chatwick is making Julian reconsider his wild ways. He has vowed to avenge his brother's death. No, he has vowed to avenge her brother's death. Just as Lily has vowed that this unreformed rake is the only husband for her. Ooh. So I figured I'd pick up the book of the month. Um, it's called Rake with a Frozen Heart by Margaret Kay. And in the back it says, uh, Waking up in a stranger's bed, Henrietta, Markham encounters the most darkly sensual man she has ever met. The last thing she remembers is being attacked by a housebreaker, yet being rescued by the notorious Earl of Pentland feels much more dangerous. Since the cataclysmic failure of his marriage, ice has flown ice has flowed in wrath or wraith St Alban's veins. But meeting impetuous, all too distracting governess Henrietta, heart heats his blood to boiling point. When she is accused of theft, Rafe finds himself offering to clear her name. Can Henrietta's innocence bring the hard the hardened rake to his knees? I like the sound of it. I've I've read a couple of chapters. I quite like it so far. I mean the font is pretty big and the description is very long winded and uh, they like to use big words unnecessarily. But yeah. So those are my books that I got recently. I have a lot of reading to do, but I plan on reading things in order. I've got a, a to be read video coming up. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.